My name is Eric Vicente, and I've been working on React Native and React Native apps at Facebook for over the past year. I'm really excited to talk about navigation, what we've learned, and the library that I'm introducing to help ease navigation for the React community and make it more flexible. <laughs> so, so say we're building an application with two tabs, the notifications tab and profile. And we have one navigator for each tab that each maintains its own state. So you can push to navigate forward and you can pop to go back without affecting the state of the other tab. Now, this works because the navigators are isolated. But one day, we need a link that goes from the notifications tab to a new page in the profile tab. <clears throat> so we can write some code that handles this, checks the route, and switches the tab if we need to. But eventually, linking code like this gets scattered throughout the app. It breaks the encapsulation of our components, which makes it really hard to share code as our, as our development team grows. But we've learned from the best, so we know that single directional data flow can help with this problem. And Redux has shown us the power that reducers can have when it comes to encapsulating and testing application logic. So we're proposing an approach where we use a single top level state to declaratively render our navigation views. So the only stateful component is the navigation root container, <clears throat> which is a top level component and is told how to render the application for a given state. The reducer we provide tells the container what the navigation state is, given the last navigation state and an action that we're taking on it. <clears throat> so how does this actually help us with our tab linking problem? Well, we need the ability to keep our navigation logic separate for each area of the app, but we still need to handle actions at the top level. So our reducer is actually a tabs reducer, which contains one stack reducer for each tab. Now the app reducer will first try to handle the action in the sub reducer for the active tab. And if the tab reducer does not return a new state in response to the action, we're gonna let the other sub reducer handle it. Now in the case that it does, we're gonna switch tabs and we're gonna turn the new state of the whole application. Now I'm, I'm a big fan of this approach because it allows us to reduce the complexity that developers have to deal with at a given time. <clears throat> Reducers are independent and they can be simple because the problem is broken up into smaller pieces. Now, thanks to this Redux-like approach, we've been able to add a bunch of important navigation features. <clears throat> so now, the Android back button is just an action that can be handled by your tree of navigation logic. You can also convert URIs into actions pretty easily, so deep linking can be done. <laughs> Next, we can persist the navigation state, so you can refresh your application code and stay on exactly the same view. Now, how have things worked up until this point? Currently, the navigation state is stored inside of the navigator components, which means it can be scattered across your app. Now, the navigator does do one thing well. It acts as the animation container view for coordinating animations between a set of scenes. However, the gestures and animations of each card are also handled by the navigator, which makes them super difficult to customize. So we need to decouple these problems. And we've realized it's better to have one state at the top level of the app with a reducer. So we're gonna use navigation root container to store our state. And if you're using Redux or Flux, you won't need this. You can use your existing stores and providers. Now, instead of using the navigator as the animation container, we're gonna use the declarative navigation animated view. <clears throat> and lastly, we wanna use custom views for the cards and modals displayed in the animation container. This way, we can utilize the new animated library to build our scene animations and decouple gestures to support custom scenes like the photo viewer. But we also want to provide pre-built components like navigation card, so it's still really easy to get up and running. <clears throat> now we took this approach because it allows us to reduce the complexity that developers have to deal with at a given time. These modules are independent and they can be simple because the problem is broken up into smaller pieces. So you could say that I've been reducing navigation, which is a new library that is available today in the React Native repository. <clears throat> There's a bunch of example code and documentation is coming later this week. While we're adopting this API at Facebook and stabilizing it, we're calling it Navigation Experimental. But now it's really up to the community. <clears throat> the views are decoupled from the navigation logic. So it's super easy to create new navigation components. And the logic 
can be fully encapsulated and published as independent reducer modules. But this is where it gets cool. The navigation reducers can be paired with the logic to publish entire sub-applications. <clears throat> and because the system is sufficiently flexible, your modules can be totally cross-platform. So I truly can't wait to see what this incredible community builds. Thank you.